programmers. I was asked a question on my channel about creating a C program where you have a list of students and their grades and printing out the student's name followed by the grade. So I thought the quickest way to answer would just be to create a YouTube video. Um, I'm using onlinegdb.com website, which is a really cool online compiler and debugging tool. I can choose any language I want. I'm going to choose C. And then the very first thing I'm going to do is create an array, a 2D array that has enough room for all of my student grades. So I'll say my student name, if it was just one name and I knew, well, the student has a name that's going to be maybe less than 20 characters long, I could do something like that. But here, I'm going to have a two-dimensional array. I'm going to have five student names, and each of those names are less than 20 characters. So five students, um, each name is less than 20 characters because you have the null character at the end. And then I also want an array for the grades. So grades could have a decimal point. You can get a 95.5 so I'm going to make those floats and I'll say grade and again if there's five students I'll be five grades. I also want a loop counter and I'm going to go through and for each of those five students I'm going to ask what's their name and what's their grade. We'll establish that first. Enter a name. Scan F will work and student name and then we'll ask about the grade let me just copy and paste this and this time it's going to be grade and we need the ampersand for the second scan f because it's not already a pointer but arrays of characters the name of the array already is a pointer and then i'm going to go through a separate for loop to print out all of those names followed by the grade so it'll be a printf statement with the name followed by the grade for each of those five students. So I'll have student name and then the grade. So we'll run this and then we'll make some improvements to this. So I'll go ahead and hit run. Oh, let's see, I must've made it. Oh, the grades are floating point numbers. So it's, it's giving me a warning that the percent D doesn't look right. So let's switch that to a percent F. I'm going to say a name is Sue, she's got 100, Tim's got 90.5, Jim has a 83.7, and then Larry has 70. Um, it's going off the screen now, but I'll scroll up in a second. Tim has 30. Okay, so the first thing i um, noticing is I don't really need six places after the decimal point, so I'm gonna change that to a point two. And also the names don't aren't always gonna line up. They're not always gonna be three characters. So I'm gonna add something saying the width of this field is going to be, and I can just hard code 20, and I could left align it or right align it, and the grades I could hard code. So right off the bat, this is going to put also a blank line there or or some stars or something to separate that from the input. Okay, so that's going to clean up the output so everything lines up neatly. Um, also, it hard coding five three times in the four times in the program, there is a better way to do it. I can do that with a pound define and I can make a variable like num and set that to five. And now everywhere where I normally would just be hard coding a five, I can do this and that allows me to change the number of students in the class with just one line of code instead of changing it four places. I can just change it and say, oh, there's actually only three students in this class now. And now we run it. Um, oh, I'm missing a semicolon. We run it and then this will be quicker to test because there's only three students. So Larry, we'll say 35, he needs to study more. Uh, Mary, a hundred 
and sue 98.9. Okay, look how neatly everything lines up. They're, they actually don't have a negative score. I just put like a little character in between the grade and the name, but now that it makes it look like a negative number, I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, big improvement, but you will notice there is still things that can go wrong. What if you have a space in your name like Sue Smith, and then we're gonna notice, ooh, what's going on there? If you're using scanf, it will stop when it sees a space. So it's stopping and it notices Smith isn't a grade, so it kind of just skips over that and puts a zero in there. And so the next name is gonna be Smith. So if you know in advance um, that you're not gonna have any spaces in your name, like you could, you could run this and say Sue underscore Smith, that's gonna work fine. But if you know in advance that you're going to have a space in the name, instead of scanf, I'd recommend that we use a different function. We could use a function f get s. And and that takes the first argument to the function is going to be the name of where do you want to store the results of whatever you scan in. The next is how many characters do you have to store the name in? And actually my size was 20. I said each student name would be less than 20 characters. And the third is what is... Um, where are you getting the input from? If it's a file pointer, you'd pass the, the file pointer here, but standard input is the user typing in at the keyboard. This is gonna be mostly uh, right. There is gonna be one other problem. So it'll work the first time through the loop, Sue Smith, and then the grade. The problem is that the enter sign that you're entering after 100 ends up being read in as the name of the second student. So the next time through the loop, it's messing up on the name. So I'm gonna add in some code to say, after you read in the floating point number, read in a character, which is the user heading enter, and don't worry about storing it in a variable. That's what that star is. Okay, this will be a, a improvement. So I'm gonna say Sue Smith, 98.9, Tim, Baker, 75.4, and then you can still do it just a single name like Jim. He got a two. Um, looks like my lining up of the grades isn't very good, but I am um, able to read in those names of spaces. The reason the lining up isn't very good is because it's storing that new line character when you hit enter as part of the student's name. And I'm gonna add one little function to fix that. So after you read in the name, we need to get rid of that new line character. All right, to get rid of those new line characters at the end of the string, I'm going to include another header. It's a string.h header and a new function right after you've read in the student's name from user input. At that point in time, what you've actually read into the student name, like if you typed in Mary, then what's in the string is Mary and a backslash n because the f get s um, stores that as part of the string and our goal is to get rid of that backslash n and replace it with a null character which is the way that you indicate you're at the end of a string. Um, so this little function right here will actually do it. So you've got this part right here is just the name of your variable um, that had the Mary and the backslash n and in this case, the length of the string that I want to keep is four. So it's kind of like saying, um, let me um, move this off to the side. It's like saying, I want to put in the fourth position a null character, meaning the compiler that but when you're running the program everybody's going to know that this is the end of the string and that you're not supposed to pay attention to the backslash n um, so it'll end up turning into a zero so a clever way to do that because the size of the string may be different depending on what the user typed in is that we are going to call this cool little function stir c s p n so they like to take the vowels out of these string functions which makes them hard to pronounce but it, basically what this function does is it says your first input is where you want to look for the characters and your second input is the 
character or characters that you're looking for, go through the string until you find this and return that position where you found that in. So this whole thing is just going to return wherever the new line character was found. And for Mary, it's a four, four different characters, so it would return four. For Bob, it would return three. And then you're going to replace the null with a zero. So when I go ahead and run this, and I type in the name, so I could say Bob has uh, 25, Charlie has 100, and then Sue, Smith, Jones, so you're allowed to have as many spaces as you want there in that name, um, has a 75.4. And then notice how nice and neat everything's lined up. Um, the only thing that's not lined up perfectly is the numbers, and that's because 100.00, that takes up six positions, and I had said only allow um, a size of five, so I'm going to change that just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist here. And let's give somebody 100 and Bill 50.5 and Jack 23.345 just to see that it's going to end up rounding that um, or actually truncating, not rounding. It looks like in this case, but it's now it's nice and lined up. All right, hopefully that answers any questions. Um, happy programming.